I admit a fascination with all manner of sometimes dangerous wildlife, but I have the sense Morrow gave me not to bring them home and make them pets. Unfortunately, my associate and junior professor, Linus Weaselbaum, does not share my view and has taken in a most alarming creature, a hornbeak trask. The thing formed a bond with him after he fed it from a table at a seedy dockside tavern, and evidently he with it. It seems quite content with him for now, but given the veracity and savagery of its periodic hungers, I fear it's only a matter of time before he fails to meet its exacting dietary schedule and makes a meal out of him. Hornbeak Trask are ravenous predators indigenous to the exotic lands of the southern continent of Zoo. The size of a large dog, these strange creatures appear to be a variety of reptile with the rough appearance of a lizard, including leathery skin whose coloration might actually provide camouflage in their native jungle habitats. In western Imran, the hornbeak trask are more commonly encountered in ports of Signar and Ord, where they traveled as pests aboard trading ships, or occasionally as ill-chosen pets by sailors lacking any good judgment. The Appalachian hornbeak suggests to some scholars that multiple species of trask may inhabit zoo, but the fact still remains very unclear. What is beyond dispute is that the trask possesses bottomless appetites and hardy constitutions. Purely carnivorous by nature, a hungry trask is content to consume any ready source of meat it can find – rats, stray dogs, gobbers, and even on occasion larger prey. A hungry trask will consider virtually anything that moves as a food source, including large birds. Trask live in a cycle of torpid dozing, ravenous hunger, and gluttonous feasting. On the hunt, they are tenacious stalkers capable of surprising speed and agility. They can unhinge their beaked jaws to take surprisingly large bites out of their prey. A trask that has killed or otherwise subdued its meal will drag it somewhere where it feels safe and then consume it in a handful of voluminous swallows. At this point, the creature lapses into a torpid, almost harmless state. Most trasks that are adopted as pets are found in such tranquil moments, surprising their new owners with their sudden change in behavior when their hunger grows. A trask will often become attached to an individual who provides them with food, but this bond can grow tenuous if a trask feels its provider is not holding up his end of the relationship. This bonding has led some to surmise that the trask might actually have pack-based habits in their natural environment. A trask that has gone more than a few days without food enters into a different state of slumber, one that closely resembles hibernation. When in this state, the trask requires very little food or water and slowly begins to lose weight. No one knows just how long a trask can go without food, but anecdotal evidence suggests they may be able to endure months or even years of depredation. Some scholars suggest this behavior developed in response to cyclical and regular diminishment of available prey in its native environment, but little is actually known about the ecology of zoo. Aside from their eating habits, only a few facts are known about the trask. The species seem to share some features of both mammals and reptiles. They appear to be warm-blooded, but are said to hatch from large leathery eggs in the manner of a snake or a lizard. Alchemists have taken some interest in the trask, finding that certain organs make fair substitutes for components usually gathered from burrow mogs. However, since the trask is only somewhat less irascible than a burrow mog, and much much rarer, this fact is little more than a curiosity and not a source of serious revenue for any noteworthy alchemical manufacturers. The trask's limitless appetite would surely wreak havoc upon its natural environment without something to keep it in check and scholars assume that a strong natural predator exists in the creature's native habitat. Academics usually cut short this line of thinking when they stop to consider the kind of predator that would subsist on a creature as dangerous as the hornbeak trask. Some scholars are concerned that trask could become a serious threat to the native wildlife and even people of western Imran should the species gain a serious foothold in an environment without any natural predators to keep it in line.